Hello everyone! Welcome back to another 2v2 Warhammer battle. This is going to be some green skins and vampire counts, so Rush Armies versus the Wood Elves and the Empire. Um, for my army here, I wanted to try and bring a couple unit types that I don't use that much, so I wanted to have a core of Savage Orc Biggins, because I don't really use the Biggin versions, I just use the normal Savage Orcs, but at the same time, I wanted to make room for Focus Fire potential of my Goblin Archer crew, so instead of going four Savage Orc Biggins, I just got two Savage Orc Biggins, and then the, uh, we have three Savage Orcs, but behind them I do have three Squig Herds and a, um, Squig Rider somewhere, there's a Squig Rider in here somewhere, oh, they're over here. Um, Night Goblin Squeak Hopper, sorry. Uh, they are being led by the Night Goblin War Boss, which I don't do not do not use that often. I'm uh, backing up with Goblin Big Bosses. We have the Orc Shaman, two Orc Boy Boy Biggins, and then again my um, Archer Squad, which is two Goblin Archers and the Rusty Errors. And then over here, Vanguard Deployed, I have a Wolf Goblin, or sorry, a Goblin Wolf Rider uh, to try and take out potential enemy artillery, like, you know, a Sunmaker. My ally here brought a whole bunch of skeletal warriors. Behind them we have Cryptors, or I should say in front of them. And then we have two Blood Knights. Yeah, two Blood Knights, the Red Duke also on a horse, and then we have two Cairn Rays for them. For the enemy player, the um, Empire player, we have the Boris Topringer on the Griffin, the Hellstorm Rocket Battery, a front line of Halberds, a back line of Hand Gunners, including um, the Silver Bullets, and we also have two Greatswords. Very dense formation. Also, I should point out that this one has lower unit counts than normal, which is unfortunate, but it happens in 2v2s. Um, and then I have the Bright Wizard with a couple, with the AoE spell, Fireball, and then the um, Raining spell that I never remember the name of. And then for the Wood Elf player, we have two Ancient Treemen being led by the Glade Lord, the uh, female version on top of a dragon. The main line is going to be a couple of Eternal Guard with shields. We have a couple Glade Guard back here, and then Treekin, and then the uh, Spell Singer of Life with a couple heal spells and the defensive um, armor. I think that's what that spell is, too. We also have a Wild Rider with shield. Um, so a lot of monstrous creatures over here so that their front line of Eternal Guard are going to kind of suffer a little bit in the numerical numbers anyway. Um, so it's kind of like numerical numbers versus more elite forces, kind of, with the great swords and all the trim. I don't know, man. Let's just go. So I want to hit this Empire player who, again, has a very, very tight formation here. I'm not entirely sure if that's going to be too tight for the Rifles Fire, but anyway, the Sunmaker is going to start opening fire onto our Savage Orc Biggins and the Skeletal Warriors. And uh, you can see my allies are going to be charging as well. I'm going to get my Goblin uh, Riders over here, and I want to silence this thing as much as possible. And uh, we're going to be hitting the line like this, and we're going to do a lot of flanking with our Cav, because the enemy didn't bring really any Cav to stop our Orc Boar Boys. Uh, so my Leader Squad and Orc Boar Boys are going to be coming over here. Savage Orcs and a Savage Orc Big, and I think it's going to be coming over here as well. Meanwhile, my Squig Herds, I'm going to try and let the Savage Orcs hit their um, Halberd line first. And then we're going to put the three Squig Herds into the front line. Actually, two in the front line. The Squig Hoppers in the front line. And then I'm going to flank, I think, with another Squig um, Herd over here. You can see Boris Topringer is going to try and stop our Orc Boy Boy Biggins, so we're going to find him for a little bit. And our uh, Goblin Wolf Riders were not found out, uh, so now we are into the Sunmaker silencing them. Meanwhile, my Archer Squad, I'm going to have focusing down the Ancient Treeman because it is going to have an armor penalty due to the Rusty Errors. And so we're just going to be focusing fire on this Treeman um, for a long time. And we're just getting an amazing flank here. Boris Topringer left his battle. Uh, we have a Flame Pillar dropping, but that's not going to do too much, so we're going to charge back into these uh, Hand Gunners. Meanwhile, the Savage Orc Biggins is going to charge. Our Savage Orcs are going to charge, the two Squickers that flanked are going to charge, my um, Leader Squad is going to be coming over here as well, and we already have a full surround in this poor Empire player uh, who had a very dense formation. The Great Swords are kind of being eaten alive by the Squickers because they do have armor piercing and bonus versus uh, small. And plus, I popped a here we go as soon as this front line met their front line, so Squickers with 87 melee attack there for a little bit, just chewing through these Great Swords, which I. <laughs> I mean, I know they're armor piercing, but honestly, I don't expect too much from the squigs, but God, like, my front line just melted that Empire front line with the Here We Go cast from our Orc Shaman. Also, um, I brought the Orc Shaman's unique item. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I don't know how long the Orc Shaman's had this, because I've never bothered to look at it. Skull Wand of Kaloth. So, this thing costs like 200, I think, and it increases the melee attack and weapon damage. This is not needed on an Orc Shaman, but I grabbed it anyway, because why not? I'm... I, I wanted to try it. I think I maybe activated it once because I'm about to throw him into a fight with uh, some halberdiers, or I already did. Maybe I already did and they already routed. Um, yeah, so that's the unique item that the Orc Shaman have. Again, I don't know when he got that, how many patches ago he's had it, but you don't need it. It's too expensive for what it is, but it kind of does add flavor because, you know, the Orcs are all about, oh, we, we're offensive killers, and it... I don't know. I think it's just too expensive. But anyway, brought that too. But within mere moments... 
The Empire's army is totally surrounded, flanked because they had no cap to hold off my flank at all. Um, and just the power of the Wob. We, like, instead of Waz though, I used a couple here we goes, and we just literally melted that poor Empire player. Meanwhile, over here, my ally has lost the Red Duke to uh, the Glade Lord and the and uh, Treeman, who we've almost focused down. Boris Stoppinger coming back here to try and find my hero squad. The Skeletal Warriors, backed up by the uh, Cryptors, are kind of just doing like this even exchange with the Wood Elves front line. I think the Wild Riders are already dead and routed, and their Glade Guard was also destroyed by uh, some of the Skeletal Warriors, zombies, I think. But again, like all these are Skeletal Warriors, they don't really have much umph, but the um, Blood. Oh, it's the Blood Knights around as well. Blood Knights did a lot of damage here. Uh, Red Duke, unfortunately, did die, but now my entire army just melted over the Empire. Uh, is going to now assist my ally. You see this tree mate coming over for our sniper squad who already uh, helped take down one of these tree mates. So we're going to run and then run interference with our uh, orcs and with our anything nearby. As this guy tries to destroy our uh, sniper crew and I'm like, nope, we're going to run. And that's going to be it. This is a quick and uh, efficient battle and good god, the power of the green skins. Those, those quick hurts, I was not expecting much. I, I, that's why I don't use them, because I don't expect anything from them, really, ever since their nerf a couple patches ago. But, uh, I mean, and there was also Savage Orc Biggins and Savage Orcs mixed in there, but I really think it, they were the ones dealing so much damage with an 87 melee attack with that Here We Go, and it just melted those great swords. Melted. And with the great swords gone, and they had nothing to stop my flank, that was their biggest um, folly here. Also, not noticing my goblin... Uh, wolf Riders until I was already killing the Sunmaker. A 300 cost unit took out... How much is the Sunmaker? It's a ridiculous amount. It's like 1800 or some shit. It's insanely expensive. Um, 300. Like, there are so many battles where Goblin Wolf Riders are such MVPs. They are so cheap. They are so fast. They are so excellent at killing units like this. Um, especially if you can Vanguard deploy them, which you can't really in every map, but this one we could. Uh, God, I love these little bastards. They're just so good. Uh, let's see. So the rest of my army, a ton of kills across the board. The uh, Goblin Archers don't show any kills because they're focusing down the Tree Men, which is what I needed them to do, and they did that really well. And then the Squig Herds, um, 38 kills, 21 kills, I think is pretty good, especially since, since this is a lower count uh, battle. And my God, I, I really think it was mostly them that melted those great swords, those poor, poor great swords. And then the Orc Biggins just slammed into Riflemen and were not stopped. They had nothing to stop me. Um, they didn't even have any of their halberds on the flanks to stop me or like any spearmen to stop a rear charge. So like in this situation, if you really want to get a Sunmaker, um, you kind of got to go either way. I wouldn't put all this money into rifles and a Sunmaker. If you're going to go three rifles, then I would definitely get cheaper artillery because you're going to need more money in protecting the back squishy line. Um, like just even cheap spearmen can take a charge and hold for a little bit. And maybe that's enough time to buy you for like hand gunners to open fire on who's ever charging the rear or something. Um, but their rear was not protected, and you can see how the you know greenskins just take advantage of that. For um, my vampire count ally, all the kills are into the blood knights. But the uh, skeletal warriors and the crypt horrors were basically just duking it out with eternal guard and uh, treekin and ancient treemen. So not a ton of kills because there wasn't really that many units to kill, but still they did a good job at holding. Poor red duke was isolated and destroyed there towards the end. I'm not even entirely sure what the Cairn race did. I think they were thrown just against Treemen, I think? And then the Graveguard, I don't even... Did they even see combat? I'm assuming they did. But yeah, these Blood Knights, though, they, they carried my uh, ally there. And then for the Wood Elf player, their Eternal Guard got a decent amount of kills. Glade Guard got crushed pretty early on. Uh, Treekin tanked it out, and then the Ancient Treemen kind of tanked it out, too. But uh, I guess this was the one that I was focusing down. Those Goblin Archers, man, they're so cheap, and with the Rusty Errors negating some armor, like, I, I really think it's a pretty solid unit. As long as you kind of use them as one solid unit, not spread their damage all over the place, unless you really need to. Uh, but yeah, good game to Harry, Javenoff, and uh, Stefan. So, again, I'm sorry, I know, it was quick. Not all battles are going to be long. Sometimes, especially with Rush Armies, they can be over pretty quickly. <laughs> that poor play. Good God. Power to wall, my friends. Let's go watch Cinematic View. But yeah, I may have to use these squigs more, man. I did not expect great things, but they they actually did some work. Especially when you have a here we go buffing them. But you remember when they used to be just insanely good? Like just just so overpowered for their price when they first came out? My god. 
When you'd have nothing but just like all squig armies running at you, that was ridiculous. I'm glad they got there. Look at those little bastards in the background. melt quite this fast most times. But man, it was just like one second they had a full army, the next second it was just gone, man. units against wood elves because they have so many creatures that can do magical attacks like the uh, tree men and the tree can i believe both do magical attacks so that's risky My friend, I didn't even use the wall. Actually, no. Well, actually, no. I did. When Boris came in there towards the end of my fight with them, I did use finally pop the wall for my night goblin. Uh, what's what's he called? Night goblin. What is he called? Whatever. The night goblin leader. I can't remember his name out right now because I, I, I hardly ever use him. Anyway, hope you enjoyed, everybody. I will see you all in the next battle. Take care.